Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition livestream campaign. My name is Dr. Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Donitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. Joe Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. Check us out on YouTube. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast. Keep in mind that we are going to be off for two weeks. Well, three weeks. Um, three weeks three weeks um well monty takes a much needed vacation and i take a much needed staycation <laughs> and um we're gonna we're gonna just be doing that and uh so we will be back monty what day are we back uh tuesday october 18th october 18th uh we will be continuing but hopefully tonight we can uh we can do some cool stuff yeah indeed well with that Shall we return to decide the fate of Drakenheim? Fate of something. Alrighty. Drakenheim is no more. First place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over, into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Wilhelm, Pluto, and Veo were in quite dire straits, but Veo quite particularly. As we go right to our battle map, we have to set the scene for you all. Our heroes are in the crypts of Castle Draken, the ancient monarchal vault where the kings and queens of old are interned, their ashes here left in small containers with their great statues that bear their visages. Yet, of course, through time and contamination, these ancient pillars that hold up the very foundations of Castle Draken have been twisted, the once marble statues decaying away, revealing strange fleshy protrusions beneath. The entire chamber is filled knee-deep in delirium sludge, and great delirium crystals protrude through cracks in the earth that rent the ground, weeping the sludge that, with a light luminescent glow, fills the entire chamber with an eerie dim light. Meanwhile, here before the foundation pillar, where the strange form of Johann Eisner is melded into the stone pillar that supports the throne of Castle Draken itself. Wilhelm and Pluto desperately battle against the maddened Queen Lenore, who was left here months ago by our heroes to contemplate her unfortunate fate. Our heroes, having decided to end her suffering finally once and for all, have found themselves confronted with a formidable foe who seems to have the, the delirium sludge and crystals and the energies of the castle at her very beck and call, as she floats suspended on the elongated ten tendrils that form the cords of her strangely mutated hair. She conjures up thick walls of 
um, a prismatic and octarine energy to block off the spaces between the pillars. One of these walls, unfortunately, Veo dove through after being cut off from the room at large, and now Veo lies in the delirium sludge, unconscious with a failed death saving throw, having tried to dive through this. So to we just ended Veo's turn. Um, and to also just recap a few of the things that are currently in play in this room for you all. Um, on her previous turn, Lenore activated her shadow crash power, which is represented by the area of kind of pur purple light that you can see around there. So bear in mind that if you end your turn in that area, you will automatically take 8d6 necrotic damage. And because you are also under Lenora's withering gaze, that damage will be doubled if you end your turn there. Okay. Pluto, you are also stuck in the delirium sludge, having fallen prone, and you're being grabbed by Lenora's tendrils and are being held fast there. Wilhelm, meanwhile, you are using your boots of spider climbing to cling onto the wall, where you are dueling with Lenore, who has removed her mask to reveal her twisted visage, her once elegant features warped by the long exposure to the delirium. As you see the scene unfolding you hear the mumbling whisper of Johann Eisner as his form on the foundation pillar stirs briefly as if the awareness of the castle itself has clued him into the fact that his daughter is in grave danger and Wilhelm and Pluto, as you glance over, you can see the anguish in his face as the urge, almost as he lurches forward in the pillar, as if he himself is trying to free himself to do something about what has happened to Veo. But you can see the wincing as he does so. For were he to act, the consequences for Castle Draken itself could be quite dire indeed and so though he his physical body can't muster a word right now you can see the that there is an obvious sign of pain and conflict in the steward as he wrestles with the love for his daughter and the duty he has solemnly sworn himself to um meanwhile casper the carpet flutters nervously above the delirium sludge. And Lenore looks over um, and you see there's an awareness of, of her face of what has happened to Veo. And she mutters for a moment, Don't worry, Veo. Soon you'll join us all, like me. It will be better this way. You'll become something wonderful. You can be one of my handmaids and stay and protect me forever. <laughs> she weeps. With that, Veo, your turn is over. You don't have to make death saves at the start of your, your turn, but you have one death saving throw. With that, Lenore spends her legendary action. And she is going to use her legendary action to guide her gaze over this way. She's able to move her speed, so she's out of the area of her own necrotic uh, energy, um, but she's able to keep the, her tendrils pinned, pinning Paluto to the ground. Um, and so, um, and as she does so, the. Um, she turns her necrotic gaze towards Veo. For those that are caught in her necrotic gaze cannot regain hit points. <laughs> Don't worry, she says. Soon you'll be something wonderful. What? <laughs> 
Oh man, I'm I'm I'm. <laughs> Pluto, it is your turn. I have line of sight still, right? Yes, you do. I. I um. I I look up to Johan as he. Uh, fights against his urges. Johan, we'll, we can help. We can help Bayo, but you need to suppress Lenore. Use use what we gave you. You you can do this. You can you can keep her at bay. Fight her back, and and we can save her. There's a moment of twisting pain that and you feel a shudder in the castle it shakes bits of gravel loosen from the ceiling and even flecks of marble fall off the statues as johan's twisted form lurches a bit forward and his eyes open it's strange because his face is like stone but when he opens his eyes you can see the flesh and the bloodshot eyes and then he looks at you, and he looks down towards you, and he says, Pluto, I can do something. I can help her. But if I do, I don't know what will happen. I don't know what will happen if I let the power out to help her. There, I can do something. I can do something to save her. But I don't know what will happen to the gate if I do. Hold the gate. We can... I put my trust in one other thing. Casper! Casper! Save... Save Veo! Okay. You want to turn to Casper now. Okay. Um, Casper says... Oh, oh... The, the, the carpet speaks out psychically and you can see that there's the confusion of it as it dart, darts around. Um, he might need some words of encouragement. Casper. Veo is the cleanest, most, most uh, cleanly rider you've ever had and right now she needs she's dirty and i don't think you're gonna let your the 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 one thing that would never shed a fur on your back to be left in the sludge and she cleaned you and now it's time for you to clean up (laughs) okay Give me a persuasion check. And I use commanding presence. And I get a 20. Oh, okay. The carpet 21 minus (laughs) 1 is emboldened by your your incursion and and it it kind of moves looking at you, looking at Veo, and gestures with its tassels, which way do you want it to move? Save do, do Veo! You, do, um, do you want the carpet to move? And Yes. What do you want it to do? I want it to <laughs> wrap around Veo's head to, to protect her from the gaze and lift her from the sludge. Okay. Roll her up. Roll her up in the carpet. Casper. You see, like, the the carpet breathe, almost like he's taking a deep breath. (gasps) And he, with with a voom, Casper Casper shoots towards Veo. um, And with a brief moment of hesitation, flies to gently scoop her out of the delirium sludge. Um, 
As Casper does so, Casper exposes themselves to the sludge. Um, And you can see the contaminated sludge seeping in to the brave little carpet. (laughs) As it lifts Veo up out of it. So Veo is on the carpet, but Casper has taken necrotic damage and has become contaminated by the by the by the sludge. And and with hungry eyes, I turn I I my my gaze falls upon Lenore. And I grip my teeth. And from the most awkward position. I hurl the javelin of lightning. Okay. I'm going to count your encouragement of the carpet as one of your attacks this turn. Okay. 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 I'm going to use lucky. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You rolled two ones. Okay. And a two. (laughs) So. The javelin goes. It it hits the pit. It 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 hit. It, you know when you throw a softball, but like wrong, and it goes behind you. I throw the javelin behind me, and real and and I recall it back into my empty hand, and I throw it once more. Hitting a twenty-one. All right, that does hit Lenore. And I will activate the lightning action. Okay. So she has to make a DC 13 deck save. She succeeds. Now, I also want to attempt... <sighs> she's just kind of floating, right? She She's... Effectively, she's flying because of her her tendrils suspending her in the air. So can she be knocked prone? Yeah, I, I would say that you could sweep the tendrils and knock her prone. Yeah. Would that disrupt her gaze? Potentially. I want her to make a DC 18 strength save. I get a t- 13. So I'm going to use trip attack. Okay. Um, on my weapon attack. And she's going to take a total of seven, five lightning damage, um, six piercing damage, five extra damage. So that's 15 total. Plus, because she's within 30 feet of the helm, she takes an extra four radiant damage and she's knocked prone okay she falls into the delirium sludge and because delirium sludge does 12d6 damage to you guys it heals her for 12d6 points (laughs) (laughs) oh wow i'm 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 okay, so, so she, so, so, so I'm going to get back uh, all the damage that you did and then some. <laughs> but is her gaze broken because she fell in sludge? Yes, she is in the delirium sludge now, which would block line of sight to her. That's something. That's, <laughs> well, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, man. Are you kidding okay. me? Okay, okay. Does her okay. effect end? Did she like. So uh, basically. Her, she doesn't have to concentrate on oh, the, okay. the, the necrotic bubble, but I'm saying that because she's fallen into the sludge, it you can't see her physically now, right? <laughs> so you can't see her necrotic gaze. So, Pluto, you're not going to take double damage from uh, e. the, the, the burst either if you end your turn there. And I will end... At this point, I I sort of as the as the javelin returns to my hand, I sort of slump down. Okay, it's going to be twenty nine necrotic damage. So I'm going to half that with my potion. So fourteen or fifteen? 
Uh, 14. Oh, so generous. And after you heal her, <laughs> come on. <laughs> um, okay, and then that's my turn. Um, enraged, Lenore is going to use her legendary action to burst back up, uh, up uh, from from prone and fly back up and turn her uh, uh, her her gaze towards you in a rage, Pol- Poluto. So that is uh, her next legendary action for this turn. Uh, and with that, we will go to Wilhelm. All right. <clears throat> Question. What are the lighting conditions in this room? I know that the sludge glows, but is um, that... I'm gonna say it's dim light. Like it's 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 definitely like that eerie cast shadows across the whole whole room. All right, great, love it. Um, <laughs> Wilhelm looks down. He's standing on the wall. He looks down at Pluto and he goes, "Pluto, you got this. Good. I don't wait for an answer." <laughs> I I oh, leap. Forgot one thing, Pluto. You ended your turn in the delirium sludge, so I also need another con save for you. I was fully immersed. Like yes. I, I, I'm drinking. Yep, I need a con this save thing. from you. Yep. I does a fifteen do it? No, that's actually a failure. So you indomitable. Gain. Okay. Uh, twenty-two. <laughs> that's a success. So then, instead of being another forty-two necrotic damage, it'll just be eleven necrotic because of your potion and the halved, and you don't gain a level of contamination. That is key. Okay, thank you, uh, okay. Wilhelm. Sir, you were saying. Uh, Wilhelm leaps off oh, the work. wall, uh, flies, uh, because I have the cloak of the bat, I grab the edges of my cloak, and I soar, um, like a dragon, and I fly- A flying squirrel, more like. I fly through the pillars and over to Veo on the carpet. Uh, I'm gonna use my, uh, cunning action to dash okay so dash fly land on the carpet or maybe not land on the carpet because veil's on the carpet i'm gonna like kind of somewhat land but i'm using my cloak to like kind of fly there okay and i'm going to um is there enough space that like i i know that casper can't really carry two of us so is there enough space for me to like push up against the wall and not be in the sludge or uh, I you do not want to you don't that's this is a oh, that's yeah. another yeah yeah do that. yeah uh, <laughs> been yeah, there i'll, I'll, I'll say there. that you could do. you could be there for sure yeah all right um and i'm gonna feed veo a greater a potion of greater healing take one of my superior <laughs> i'm gonna feed potion uh i'm gonna gra- okay yeah i'm keeping my potions i grab one of her superior <laughs> potions off her belt and i i I pour it down her throat. And to clarify, you're not using the po- polymorph power of the cloak. You're using the always... Just the fly. Yeah, just the always on fly speed that... Act- okay, yeah. As long as I'm in dim light or darkness, um, okay, then I can fly. So okay. I fly over... But you have to hold the cloak. So you're going to have to let go of the cloak to feed her the potion... And I, yeah. but I guess you're standing, you're, you're like standing on the wall. I'll, I'll allow that. Okay. Okay. All right. So you feed Veo the potion because she's no longer in the necrotic gaze because she turned back over to Paluto because of the javelin shot. So, um, so sh- yes, you feed Veo the potion successfully. 40? 40? 40. And Veo, ah. you're, you're on a carpet. And I'm like, Veo, Lord Commander, we need you. Seeing. Seeing you fly over that way, Lenore is going to use her last legendary action for the turn, and following you 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 over, um, she you know I, I guess she's mad at Pluto, um, so she is going to use her last legendary action to use her contaminated grasp through her tendrils. I need a con save from you, Pluto. Okay. Now we're doing raw. We're we're out of indomitable. <laughs> We're out of lucky. We're just going on. We got no no backups. I get a twelve. That's a failure. Uh, so you take sixteen necrotic damage and gain one level of contamination. Mm. And I use the expergo. My, I think I I believe I have one charge left. If you have one charge left and use it, you will immediately begin vomiting. I will accept the level of exhaustion and i appreciate your patience in this time of dire need okay how much damage was it uh 16 and with everything with all the 
things. Uh, it'll, it'll be eight then. And roll me a d6 to determine if you mutate. I don't want to mutate, but my dice rolls have said otherwise. I get a two. Do you have two levels of contamination? or just I one? currently have, this will be my first. Okay, so you do not mutate. Chat, you can hold me accountable, but I believe that is my first. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure I write that down. All right. It is the Lenore's lair action. And so she is going to conjure another wall and I'm going to put it right there. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, Veo, we need to leave or else we're going to be in a situation in, in a minute. <laughs> yeah, you have, it's almost, what is that, Uno? What what game are we playing here? Connect four. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, actually, connect four. <laughs> then Lenore's turn. The Shadow Crash goes away. Uh, does it recharge the... Uh, yeah, it does. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Kelly rubs his temple. Mm. Do I use the Shadow Crash again or not? It's it's recharged every turn. Um, oh, good for you. Yeah. It's great. It's awesome. I okay. already rolled three ones this this combat encounter. We've been on we've been Get some new dice, minute. Pluto. Get some new dice. Okay, so I gotta keep Pluto restrained. Because that's great. So she's gonna move over here. Because I need to stay within. That's great. <laughs> and prone. Because I need. To, I need to. Like my head is I need down to stay underwater. within thirty feet of you to keep you held down. So that's where she can go to keep you held. Well, jokes on you. You take a d6 radiant damage every time you're within thirty feet of me. So we're at a standoff. Okay. Well, I is think... it equal? Is it an equal standoff? No. Okay. So, but I'm d6 necrotic. I'm. Still... I'm out of range for the tendrils there. So. Yeah, I think um, I think I'm just gonna shadow crash you guys again because it's awesome and it does a lot of damage. So, so awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So here is the shadow crash. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna create it right there. There we go. Um, so I need, uh, from the two of you for Shadow Crash, when it lands, I need, um, dexterity saving throws from both of you. Do it. You can do it. Something that helps me with this. What do I have? Uh... Evasion. I got a 15. And I'm out of luck points. You have evasion too, right? I do have evasion. That's if... If you succeed, right? You can negate the damage? Yeah. I have a... But you can always... Uh, what's the What's the other What do you got, Veo? 26. So, Veo, you succeed, but Wilhelm, you fail. Yeah. Uh, so, Wilhelm, uh, that is going to be... 36 necrotic damage to you, which is doubled because you are in the area of uh, Lenore's withering gaze. I thought she was gazing at Pluto. Now no, she's she, gazing she at us. She turned to look at you guys. Yeah. Uh, but half, but it's also because halved half. because so of evasion. Okay. So 36 necrotic damage. Thank you, sir. Did you take a potion or no? Of Invulnerability? Oh, oh goodness, just... no. That was Pluto. Okay. Okay. I never drink potions. Okay, so it's doubled, but then halved again. Okay, so it's so yeah, it's thirty six either way. Okay, and yeah, if you end your turn in the shadow crash, uh, you will take the damage again. <laughs> Love it. You don't want to. I Been don't. There. I don't at all. And and as she does, so she says, "There's no need to fight. There's no need for this pain." I've become something wonderful. We can be like a court once more, like a family 
together. And with that, Veo, it is your turn. You have survived. <laughs> no need for a death save. No need for anything. You are safe and sound you on safe, the safe. shuddering form of uh, uh, on the shuddering carpet that is Casper. And these walls are not see through. Just want to double check, right? Uh, yeah, the, you you cannot see through the walls. No. Okay. Um. What's Casper's fly speed? Uh, Casper's fly speed is 30 feet. Yeah. And you can dash. If you dash with Casper, um, then you like you can. I'll, I'll allow you to cunning action dash with Casper if you want to. I could get here. Can I? Okay, hold on. Let me do some math. Um, I'm just trying to, I guess, find a vantage spot where I can see her. Could I see her from this spot? Right uh, could here? you ping it? Oh, hold on. Why is it there? Uh, yeah, yes, you, you would be able to see her from there. Okay, so then I am going to dash using my bonus action with Casper. Okay. Um, and then... Mm, actually, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can't do both of those things. Darn it, I don't think I can get out. Um, wait, actually, hold on. Wait. Oh, I might be able to get to the edge. Okay, so... <laughs> If I don't, yeah, can I, is that going through a pillar? Yeah, but I would say that with your, like, you could, that's 55 feet to get there. I would allow that for 60 feet of movement. Okay. Yeah. Then I will dash with Casper to go Okay. Woo, over here. As you fly, you can see the delirium sludge that is thickly matted now into Casper's form. Um, and um, as Casper flies through the air, um, you can see that um, something is continuing to contaminate Casper. Um, but also, Veo, vale, something is continuing to contaminate you too, because oh. you still went through that wall. Um, and so you now, um, at the end of each of your turns, you need to make a saving throw versus contamination. Um, and, um, and if you, and every time you fail, you'll mm -hmm. gain a level of contamination, but, e but, and you have to succeed three times in order for this effect to end. Okay. So do I do that now or at the end? At the end of your turn. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm just gonna continue to hit Lenore with two attacks with my longbow. Here we go. Uh, okay. 12. <laughs> okay, that is a hit. Uh, no, a 12 is not a hit. Sorry, I thought you. Blah, blah, blah. No, that's a miss. I got real excited there. I was like, wow, such low AC. 20 to hit. That will go, that will strike. Nice. You. Okay. And I don't get sneak attack. Okay. That is 23 damage. Okay. Almost made up for how much Lenore healed from going in the sludge. Um, as the arrow winces out at Lenore, um, she um, gasps in pain. Veo, anything else for your turn? Uh, no, I think I think that's all my movement. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stay there. Okay. Um, in this case, um, I need a con save from you, Veo. Ah. Uh... 
20. Okay. Uh, so that is a save. So that is one of your three successful saves you need to uh, shake the effect. Okay. Um, alrighty. Lenore will use her legendary action and she cries out, there is no escape for you, my dear. You will serve your true queen. And she's going to shoot you with her insanity beams. Uh, getting a 27 to hit you, Veo. Oh, yeah. That's going to be 22 necrotic damage. Uh, and then the insanity beams are going to leap to a new target, which can in I, this... Can I use... Uh, Uncanny dodge? I... Yeah. Yes, yes, you can. Um, and then I can uh, repeat the attack against Paluto, um, who is restrained, so I get advantage, but he's prone, so that cancels it. So, yes. Paluto, I get a 15 to hit you with the insanity beam. It misses! Okay. It hits me in the back where my shield is. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Um, so, uh, that's Lenore's legendary action. Uh, Paluto, it is your turn. Um, how tall, I want to ask a question, from the surface of the sludge to the ceiling, how tall? Is uh, it is approximately 40, 50 feet, I think. Let me double check. It's either 40, 50, or 60. Fifty feet. <laughs> Fifty feet high. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I guess I could try to break out of this. Yep. You you, you can. Athletics or acrobatics can be used to break out of it. Um, I'm going to attempt to break out, break free. Okay, give me athletics or acrobatics. Of this, uh, I get a twenty-four. You break out of the grapple. Um, you are in the sludge, so you're. It is still difficult ground, but you could move out of it if you wanted to. Though. I'm going to attempt to climb up to the ledge. Yeah, yeah. I want to try fine. to see if I can get up here. Yep. And so that's my action. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use. Um, the lovable I'm going to use um my where is it second wind okay sounds good um and get some uh, hp back <laughs> anything else from you pluto no okay. that was all my movement right the yeah insanity beams cost Lenore two legendary actions so i only have one left remaining so Bam. i I'm just going to okay. use that to have Lenore move back towards the two of you. Get nice and close. But she's still in the air. Um, and then um, we will come to Wilhelm at the top of the round. All right. <clears throat> Rule number 100. When you're low on options, do whatever it takes. Uh, Wilhelm leaps into the air again, okay. grabbing his cloak. Uh, bonus action, dashing. And really he good. flies towards Lenore, um, <clears throat> yelling out loud, You forgot so many of my birthdays! Um, and he, I don't know. And he lands on uh, the pillar in front of her. Uh, so he's now standing on the pillar with his boots, and okay. I'm, I'm going to uh, attack her with my rapier. Okay. Yeah, get her. Uh, that's going to be a 23 to hit. Okay, that is a hit. And I'm going to sneak attack her. Okay.
That's going to be 31 damage. And yeah, I bonus action dashed. Uh, I think... I think that's everything for me. Okay. As you stab into her, she winces in pain and, and grasps the wound. She is extremely wounded. There's not much more to her life. Uh, but she is still um, still holding fast um, with this. Um, her turn expended. Um, what she will do is uh, use her lair action. Um, and in this case, she's going to conjure another wall right here. Now, the wall technically is a plane, so it doesn't fill that full space between, like, so Wilhelm, mm. you're not in it. It actually, right, right. It, it okay, can't, good. like, it, it can't, it, 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 the wall has to actually push you, like, it can't be created with you in it, basically. Yeah. So, so, yeah. It, um, it appears right behind me, which is yeah. scary enough yeah. for Wilhelm, knowing what happened to Veo. So it appears, like, inches behind me, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Almost got my butt. Yeah. It's hot. It's um, hot back. And then it is her turn. My butt is hot? It's hot. No, it's just hot back there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, still not on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, the Shadow Crash <laughs> does not um, uh, recharge. Yay. So, I think Lenore <laughs> is just going to snake hair will uh, wilhelm uh, a whole uh -oh. bunch of a whole bunch of times so i guess i get to do this um i get to make uh yeah i get to make four attacks yeah four attacks with my tendrils Go for it. I am indestructible. You might be. That is the word. That is so bad. I roll a 14, a 13, mm -hmm. and a 16. Mm -hmm. And the last attack is a 26. Uh, so they just clang off of my new shiny armor. And I'm standing there like, haha. And then the last one gets me in the face. I was really hoping to hit you with the first attack so I could hit you with a bunch of levels of contamination. Okay, so you are restrained. Uh, you're going to take a total of 20 damage, and you are grappled. Um, I'm, I'm going to... Can I half that with a yep. uncanny dodge? That's going to be 10. Uh, but fortunately, I still have legendary actions to use. So, oh, man. That could have been so much better. I could have done, like, 80 damage to you just... And Tendrils we, come up, rip Wilhelm apart. But no, it's did not I, meant to be. No, no. Uh, <laughs> did did you say I took ten damage and what else happened? Uh, you are restrained and grappled. Restrained. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No problem. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm being lifted up by her hair. Uh. uh and. Oh, as, being lifted up by her hair. Um, then she is going to fly down into the sludge to heal oh, herself. No. no. What? <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> she just she does like a dive into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just a just a quick dip in the pool. Uh, so she's gonna regain twelve d six hit points. Uh, yeah, so she regains 45 hit points. <laughs> Just a rejuvenating, you know, you it's know. It's a spa day. It, yeah, it's a rejuvenating spa day for Lenore. Yeah. Calm. <laughs> Do her oh, walls oh just stay up forever? Do they ever go away? Uh, yeah, they just stay. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> this is good. This is great. Yeah, I, yeah we were so ready. Just don't go into it. Okay. So cool. Uh, Veo, it is your turn. 
Okay, I'm going to fly a little bit with Casper. We're going to go... Mm, sorry, she's in the sludge. I can't see her. Uh, she is... She would have cover, but she's just... But you can still see her. Yeah. Okay, sweet. But so again, that doesn't, doesn't matter. doesn't have cover for me. Because you're a sharpshooter, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> in order to get here, essentially what I want to do is I want to... Um, Oh, that's the wrong tool. Get to here mm -hmm. using Zephyr Strike as my bonus action spell. Okay. Okay. Because that gives me an extra 30 feet of movement. Leave me. Leave me, Casper. <laughs> Can you? Would you al allow me to climb across the walls? I guess I have climbing speed, too. You you do. Um, I think for you, you need to use your hands to climb. Yeah. Right, so you could shoot a cr like so. If you want to shoot your bow, you're gonna have to stop climbing. Yeah, I want to get down on the ground. Okay, yeah, then I, I can accept that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So then I leave you, Casper, <laughs> and I <laughs> climb you, you. across. Where am I? There I am. Okay, to here. Mm -hmm. Um, and the idea is that I can shoot through the pillars to get her that is so threading the needle but i'll allow it yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's why she's a sharpshooter yeah that's why i'm a sharpshooter what a snipe and i'm gonna take the advantage from my zephyr strike yeah because i get advantage on one of my attack rolls okay here we go oh just nuke her crit come on uh, not a crit, but oh. a 21 to hit. I still appreciate that. And you I get an extra d8 and sneaky sneak. Because Will Hans right there. Uh, actually, no, because she flew down, so you wouldn't get sneak ah. attack. Yeah. No, but you oh, had, yeah, advantage had advantage on the shot. <laughs> yes. Right, right. Okay. So, put away dice. Two, six, 40 damage. Yeah. Take okay. a heal. Well, one of them. Good, 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 good. good. Okay. good. And then second one. Uh, another 21 to hit. All right. Both the arrows connect and fly through the air towards Lenore. And that is a uh, 25 damage. Interesting. And okay. The two, air, the two arrows connect, uh, having undone all the healing that she received uh, now. Um, but she... And Lenore whimpers, fluttering faintly at the edge of life. I'm just going to shift right into the corner. Just, just in case. And then I do my contam contamination roll. Yep. Uh, ah. 11. That is a failure. You gain a level of contamination. Well, well. Is this your first level or how many? I believe so. Okay. Roll a d6. Oh no. Let me just hold on. Five. Okay. You do not mutate. Okay. Even the is actually kind of fun. Is it? Yeah. 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 That's how Wrath became Spider Man. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Lenora's going to use her legendary action to you to. Uh, use her um, contaminating uh, to use her tendrils to contaminate Wilhelm. Give me mm. a con save, Wilhelm. Uh, can do it, Wilhelm. Can do it. Twenty-two. That wow. Okay. Uh, you suffer no yeah. necrotic damage and gain no levels of contamination. Woo! Uh, yeah. That uh, resilient. You feel the con. tendrils pumping contaminated energy into your body, but you. Resist it successfully. He, Wilhelm's been contaminated so many times now that it, it, he has a higher tolerance. That's how I'm. That's how I'm role playing the resilient mm -hmm. constitution. Is it takes a bit more for him to start feeling the effects. Okay. His teeth might be falling out, but he's fine. Yes, no. Pluto, it's your turn. Finger okay. Pluto, so I'm like in the air, being held by all these tendrils. It's pumping sludge into me. The, these walls, they they go ceiling to sludge. Correct. 
So this is what I want to do. Unveil Ignatius. Okay. I want to whistle to Casper and leap uh, dramatically into the air. Okay. To go around the right pillar. Okay. I want to land on Casper mid-flight. So Casper comes around the other side of the pillar and dive into the sludge, grab Lenore with my action, and just just and bring her out of the sludge as I pierce her with Ignatius. Okay, so you want Casper to fly here. Yeah. I leap out onto Casper and then into the sludge? Yeah. Okay, I can allow that. Give me an athletics check. Uh, 15. Okay, sure. So you whistle, um, and Casper nods. Uh, Casper now has three levels of contamination. Um, and, um... <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Casper's, tass- Clean up. <laughs> Ca- Casper's <laughs> tassels have turned into tentacles. What? Where's press of digitation when you need it? Uh, yeah. We're need a lot and, more than and that. And Casper has also grown an eyeball. Um, <gasps> oh, yeah. Aww, he's uh, becoming a person. He's a real boy. And, he's a real and so, boy. <laughs> and, and, so the, and, and so you leap out from Casper and into the delirium sludge yourself. So you, and I want to grab Lenore and and lift her up out of the sludge. Okay. So first give me a con save for diving into the sludge. Um, I get a 17. Okay. So that's a fail. Um, so that's a level of contamination plus... <sighs> Uh, 40 necrotic damage. Half to 20, and I have to roll a d6? Yeah, now that's two levels of contamination. Correct. Uh, I get a two. You mutate! Roll a d20! (laughs) It's just, it's how excited you get that gets me excited. Even though I know I shouldn't be, because you get excited when you kill people. So I'm also, like, nervous. 16! I hope it's long arms. It's spider climb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not killer. <laughs> With Lenore. Get her out of there. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to grab grapple her. Yeah. With okay. one of my attacks. You sprout spider limbs out of your back. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> <laughs> And as I lift her out of the sludge, okay, I so th- pierce her. So that's a grapple check. So okay. you replace one of your a- attacks. So we're going to make opposed grapple checks. I get a... Is it athletics? Uh, yeah. I get a 13. Fortunately for you, I have no strength. So I get a 12. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> and as I lift her from the sludge, the healing sludge... I attack her. Okay. Do I get advantage? Uh, no, you don't get advantage. Uh, if I'm grappled, I just no, attack her. No, no, okay. y- y- yeah. Um, I get a 21 to hit with Ignatius. You, s- She has one hit point remaining. So, I, it's, it's a slow attack. And all of this is very, like, as I land in the sludge... And I feel the sludge coursing through my body as tentacle, like as spider limbs grow out my back and pierce through my armor. I slowly pick her up and with just solemn eyes, I don't say a word. I just slowly drive Ignatius through her chest, just through her, her belly, because it's going to be an open casket. And I just finish. And I continue to hold her above the sludge so she cannot regenerate. And I stand in it for just a moment. Okay. As I hold her lifeless body. As the life leaves her, her tendrils wither away like vines that age, uh, through, like dead vines aging through the centuries. The pain 
relaxes from her face and her strangely elongated limbs drop to their sides um and the walls of octarine energy dissipate and the shadows uh that were gathering fade um, Press now lenore you have earned it well there is still a lot to track as we recuperate um as lenore uh falls um and the gate uh, and the walls open up elias and ophelia come to the edge of the of the room which they had been cut out from to see the site what will you all do um <clears throat> i ask pluto to lay lenore on casper <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> He's got <laughs> eyes and tendrils now. Tentacles. Well, either that or you're going to carry her out, Pluto. I, I'm i going to... Okay. It's it's creepy, but it's also like... You know, um, a utility. I, I the, the legs reach out my back and they climb up the pillar out of the sludge. And I imagine I kind of leap from pillar to pillar, carrying her body. Um, back to the the edge with um, okay. Ophelia Reed, and um, yeah, I'm gonna fly, glide gently out of the room, um, following Pluto, and uh, I'm gonna bring like I'm gonna beckon Casper with me, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna ask as as I exit the room, following Pluto carrying Lenore. I'm going to look to Elias and Ophelia and just ask. I'm like, Casper is not part of this adventuring party, not part of the duel. Do you have anything that could spare the carpet? It was heroic and saved and, and helped us back there. Ophelia says, well, the, this is highly irregular. Uh, I, I suppose I could purge the contamination from it it doesn't really have a body or a tincture but I can try it might take me about an hour Uh, very well we'll probably need to make some preparations but um, Veo are you okay (laughs) I'm coming and I climb slowly across the wall okay to the entrance and I smother Wilhelm in a hug, and I just say, <laughs> "Thank you for saving me." It was very uh, brave, Wilhelm. I wasn't going to leave either of you behind. I um, we're in this together, and hmm. if it's okay with you, um, is Lenore still holding her her mask? Ah, uh, yes. I'm I'm going to take the mask from her hand. Okay. Um you have the mask. She uh, also Lenore was still wearing her famous uh emerald necklace uh and her, you know, her twisted gowns now. Um Veo, you are still suffering from the effects of that contaminated spell. Yep. So I need another con save from you. Uh, nine. Uh, that's another level of contamination. How many levels of contamination is that? Two. Okay, roll a d6. Uh, guys. Maybe we should not purge the carpet. We should... <laughs> we, Ophelia can't help us until we're oh, yeah. out. One. Uh, you mutate. Roll a d20. Oh, man. Oh, oh no. no. Do you have any Aquax Burgo? Um, I can't remember what we took before we came. We did take an Aquax Burgo. I, I only have one charge left, and as Monty said, if I if I use it, I. I mean, now's the time to start vomiting. If you only have one charge left, I I also only have one charge yeah. left. Veil. I mean, I can I, Im- imagine that I haven't vomited yet, so that I have some. I just can't remember. Okay. Um. If you, I will. I don't know if you've used any doses of it or, or anything like that, but you could take it. Another... I know I for sure used 
one or two. Okay. I will even say that I've used two just to. Okay. You've one um, left, like like us. Okay. Yeah. I need you to roll for the mutation first. Yep. Seven. Okay. Um, you uh, emit a dim, oct- a healthy octarine glow to a range of ten feet. You gain Uh-oh. a lambent glow. Veo, you're not Veo. hiding anymore. Veo, you're glowing. Um, okay. Uh, so you've got two levels of contamination. Um, this effect is going to continue until it ends. So until either you turn into a monster or you save three times. You've saved twice so far. No, once. What? Yeah, you saved once so far. So I need another save. Unless you're going to take any other actions to stop help can help Theo. Can I Can do- we help? Um, for example, will a um, will the ointment do anything? No. Unless you have not, any abilities that grant advantage on con saves or anything like that. Um, will using one of the charges do any... Like the it last would grant charge? an automatic success, yes. Okay. It would turn... Uh, and remember, you can roll and decide to turn a fail failure into a success. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, just trying to see. I don't think I have anything. Okay. Roll again then. Okay. Okay. Uh, fourteen. That is another failure. I guess I'm using. Use use it. Use it. I use it. <laughs> That's uh, a good idea. I still have extra aqua expergo. Can I like inject Veo again? Uh. Yes, you could. Um, okay. Well, she's... I'm vomiting everywhere. <laughs> Mayo, quickly, take this needle. Okay, let's uh, let's just see what happens here. Okay. I'm glowing. I'm vomiting. Okay. So, Veo, you take 10 necrotic damage from the Aqua Expergo expiring, and your hit point maximum is reduced by 10 in, until th- this, uh, this ends. And then... Wilhelm can give you another Aqua Expergo. It's it's messy business. Have have you ever tried to give a cat medication? Oh god! Oh, oh yeah! Oh, she's That's screeching awful. and she's yeah. clawing you. Yeah, she's glowing, vomiting, screeching, clawing at me while I'm like yeah. injecting I'm, more Aqua. So expergo. yeah, technically put... speaking, you can as long as you can endure the retching phase of the Aqua Expergo, you can. There's we didn't put any limits on how many times you can use it per day. So yeah, you can take another Aqua Expergo uh, and see, and so we just have to figure out how many uses of this it takes you to get through it, which you would. So yeah, you're just going to be, just yeah. Just need one more. Yeah, yeah. See if you can make one more save, and then okay. the... So I've been stabbed with the Aqua Expergo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I rolled a 21. So. Okay, so that's a save on your own. So that actually, nice you actually wouldn't need another dose of Aqua Expergo then in that case. The needle's already in you. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, you're fine. You're you're okay. Okay. So, Veo, I think that was two or three levels of contamination? Uh, Two. Two total? Okay. Yeah, because then I, it was going to be three, but then I used the save and okay. then I saved again. Well, that's lots of that you are all quite contaminated from this. Um, um, and Ophelia Reed does manage to stymie the contamination on um, on Casper. However, this I'm going to say that this process um, renders Casper immobile and inert for the next four days. I um roll him up. I roll Casper up. <laughs> and can is Casper still sentient? Um he, he yes, but he's kind of babbling. Like you've gone through having contamination purge from you. You know how much it sucks for several days I'm, afterwards. I roll him up and I'm petting him and I'm like you're such a brave carpet. You're so brave. You brave little carpet. You're the bravest carpet. You have no idea how brave you were and you've just proven to all of us that you are in fact the bravest carpet. Thank you, Casper. You saved Veo. I feel like Casper. we're all huddling around the carpet. Just yeah, like, there's a group Casper. hug with Casper the carpet rolled up. <laughs> you're the best carpet. And you saved so us. Oh, you poked his eye. You poked um, his eye right now. 
Theo, Pluto, I, um, <clears throat> I know we probably want to get out of the city as quickly as possible. Um, we will do what we must, but I do have a favor to ask. Whether it be on our way out or whether we leave and come back in because we need to, um, Lenore, although not the best aunt in the world, uh, was a Von Kessel. And now that she's been put to rest, I see no reason to bring her, no, I see no reason not to bring her to Queen's Park Garden, to the gardens that were built and grown for her honor. And if you would, I would like to have a ceremony there. I know it's not the safest location, but it is Lenore's garden. And I don't see anywhere else that she would rather be laying to rest than, than there. That is awfully, uh, that is awfully, um, thoughtful of you. And I think, I think I can accommodate. I think it's, she she was a i don't know what she is now but what she was was royalty and you know if we if we can't even behave the way we want now we can't do what's right in these moments then you know what are we gonna are we gonna just be animals i i hold up the the mask and i and i i this mask symbolizes not who Lenore was, but what she became. The Lenore that I know, for all of her personality quirks, was still my aunt. And I gotta say, the creature that we just fought, even though, you know, at times I would have loved to have called my aunt a, uh, a monster. But not like this. And um, I'm glad that whatever suffering she was feeling can, can maybe be properly uh, put to rest now. And this mask can stand as a symbol of the monster. But, and I, I'm going to reach down to, to her body. The dead have no need of trinkets. And this necklace is a symbol of who she was. And this necklace belongs in the Von Kessel line. And hopefully there's somebody else worthy of this someday. But uh, for now, I'll keep it as a memory of who Lenore was and what she stood for I think that giving her a proper burial is is right I don't know if I can make it to the gardens I, uh, but should we have a funeral for the the people of the city to mourn her as well the people who knew her served her and bring her ashes to the garden. Elias Drexel says, There have been many who have suffered this fate. I have seen the faces of countless soldiers who in their last moments became maddened beasts. I have seen sisters have to end the lives of their brothers as their stomachs burst forth in a mass of tentacles and teeth. I have seen fathers let go, have to bury their sons. I have seen mothers have to bury their daughters, daughters, their mothers, aunts, their uncles. I have buried families knowing that there was no one to come and pay respects because they'd all given their lives. So many have lost, and many lo gave their lives trying to save Lenore. There were many of our own soldiers. Many 
Pluto, Veo, that you fought alongside, yeah. who tried to protect her, who tried to save her, who tried to find a way. It's not just Lenore who deserves respect in that moment. There's so many others who have given their hearts, who have given their lives. It feels... And my choices too. I think of all the arguments we fought over Lenore, over her fate, over what we were going to do with her. She was a queen and we used her like a pawn. I... I didn't know that she was even here until recently, and... Elias, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I wish I had known. I think a ceremony is in order, not just for Lenore, but Veo, you're right. We need to bring this body out of Drakenheim and hold a ceremony for the people, the Hooded Lanterns, really anybody in Amberwood Village who wishes to pay their respects mm. and for not just her but for for everybody who's been lost to this city to delirium to the, the contamination and then after the ceremony if it's okay I will take the ashes and I will bring them to Queen's Park Garden at a time that is better suited for mm. us to make that venture. We can raise a power for... I know that we had our disagreements over what to do with Lenore for a long time, Veo, Polito. I feel like today you've righted a wrong. Today she wasn't and. When we were fighting over her, she was still a little bit of Lenore. She wasn't anymore. Ignatius helped me face the truth. Yeah, and the truth <sighs> was that she's not who she was. She's something different. And the silence is, is better now because we have the memory. I don't know about Lenore, but I know that House Jones is the Caspian family that she comes from. They have great faith and they keep the flame. We can see to it that her ceremony is overseen under the watchful eye of St. Tarna. And I hope, I hope, that whatever has happened to her tortured spirit, that she can see the light of the sacred flame and may it guide her to a righteous place, that place where dawn breaks over the Shadowlands. For she does not, none deserve to wallow in the shadows. Thank you, Ophelia, Elias. Thank you, Pluto, Veo, Casper. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm quite eager to get out of this city. It's not going to be a trivial matter either. We should make a plan for our escape. And that's where we'll take our break. And we are back from our short rest. We have restocked on our consumables and are ready to play some more D&D. &D. The halls beneath Castle Draken are silent and cold as the scene shifts. As you roll up Casper, Ophelia Reed takes some cloth from her pack, some linens, 
and gently uses them to wrap the body of Lenore in a respectful manner. Um, the the in a, in a manner similar to the way that um, the fa- flame heavers of the sacred flame would prepare a body to be kept before its cremation, right? Because of course, in in the continent, um, actual burial is just not really a thing for for most most people. Like that's burying people is something the dwarves do. <laughs> Right, um, but um, or 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 some denominations of the of the old gods, but uh, amongst the followers of the sacred flame, cremation is the way to to deal with the interment of the dead, unless you're a paladin or a cleric. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, and so Ophelia bringing out her her supplies that she has with her. She has a bit of linen to wrap. Uh, the body in, and so you are all able to take a short rest down in the vaults if you do so choose to do so. Um, just remember, um, those of you who do have two levels of contamination, um, if you do have two levels of contamination, uh, and you do want to regain some hit points during your short rest, uh, whatever you get back from expending hit do- dice is halved. So my expergo went, I guess. Am I still have contamination? It's not exhaustion. Um, the you still have two levels of contamination because aqua expergo doesn't remove contamination; it simply prevents you from getting it. Okay. Right. Yeah. So half those dice. Yeah. So if you expend hit dice, whatever you roll, you have to have the amount of hit points you regain. Did you all get two levels of contamination? I didn't. Okay. Just Van and Pluto. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. As you rest up, Elias Drexel says, this has gone on long enough. How are we getting out of here? Um, we're still in the dungeon, so I don't know what time of day it is. Ophelia Reed says, By my best guess, it's going to be getting pretty late soon. Sun's going down, uh, if I had to guess. Well, once the sun goes down, I'll be able to fly out of here, so that's one person taken care of. Uh, Veo, Pluto, what do we have? I mean, I can climb over the wall. Yep, you could conceivably just climb down the walls of, of the castle and down the cliffs. I think, yeah, and I can also climb. Because of these right. handy old... Uh... Right, we're going to need to get that looked at. <sighs> but for now, what but- a utility. Me and oh, Ophelia like also need to get out of here too. Cool. So, uh, Ophelia, because I think you have soft hands. Um, if I made you a giant eagle, could you lightly grasp the body of L- Lenore and carry uh, Elias Drexel uh, upon your uh, winged back? Ophelia Reed says. I've never had such strange magic transform my shape before, but uh, I, I reckon that I could could handle that. It'd be quite odd to be a bird, but uh, I, I suppose so. Yeah, don't knock until you try. It. It's yeah, fun. Just, yeah, I, I appreciate you trying new things and putting yourself out there. All right, then. How are we going to make our escape? Should we head to one of the towers? Back to one of the the steward's tower? Let's go to the most evil place in this entire castle. Veo's bedroom? Be- Veo's bedroom. <laughs> right. Right. Maybe a bit dusty. But... Presence is strong there. As you leave the crypts, um, Pluto and Wilhelm you hear a voice just touch your mind for a moment of Johan saying, 
Thank you for saving her. And Veo, uh, you hear a warm voice say, I hope you haven't spent all nine of your lives yet. You've got a lot yet to do. Continue to do it. Father, I will see you again. And he says, Please, stay safe. If I didn't know that you were out there, I don't know if I'd have the strength to keep doing this. You keep doing this regardless of what happens to me. It's not just about me. It's about everyone. You can do it. I trust you. We all need to know that we're doing it for the right reasons. As long as there's family, it's the right reasons. Family means so much more than just you and me. These (sighs) people here are my family. So regardless of what happens to me, if I die out there trying to do my best to protect those I care about, I hope you'll continue to protect them too. I've done this thinking that you were gone for so long. I just don't want to lose you, Veo. Please. I don't want to lose you. I'll be careful. I know you will be. As you head back up to your tower and make the preparations to transform Ophelia Reed or take up your cloaks or your climb speeds, is there anything else any of you would like to do before you leave Castle Draken? I'm ready to get out. I don't know. Um, yeah. The, the, this place... We're on day four. Or are we on day five now? Yeah, it'll Probably be day five. Day, yeah. Day five, right? Yeah. Since we're um, not going to be flying back to the castle, gentlemen, I'm thinking maybe we pass without trace just to see if we can avoid any more interruptions i i would in, mm. i would like to uh avoid any more assassination attempts or any more uh falling in goo all right well with those preparations in place i think that you are able to clamber down climb down swoop down fly down the sides of castle draken down the cliff and the overlook towards the northern uh, ravines in the forested area north of Castle Draken. There, as you pass through the woods and the forests and loop back around to find the roads that lead down towards Camp Dawn, you are with Pass Without Trace and your other preparations. I'm not even going to have you guys roll it. That's enough for me that you can make it out of the city safely. Thank you. And Ophelia Reed turns into a giant eagle and flies. Yep. Right yep. out. Um, before she does, I, I before we leave, I put a hand on her shoulder and I say, rule number 16, a new experience often leads to new lessons. And then she giant eagles. I poke her with a ring in her forehead <laughs> as she as it becomes a beak. And... All righty. I don't even know how this works. It just happens. I just poke people with it. (laughs) As you and Wilhelm, as you take to the wing to fly out over the night, you do see one sight heading down Champion's Way. A massive covered wagon and the knights and Uriel Radley and the knights of the Silver Order leaving Drakenheim with their own prize.
You arrive uh, back at Camp Dawn to a drowsy fanfare as the last light of the day finally descends into the night. The clouds hanging overhead um, are a shroud over the night as word gets around the camp of the body that was brought back with Ophelia Reed. No one said anything, but the rumors, you can tell that the rumors are already beginning to fly. There's relief in knowing that it wasn't any of you or the Lord Commander, because when you you as you arrive, there's that initial stir that people wondered, eagle with the with the commander, what's going on? Like who died? Uh, so there was an immediate wonder, like was it Veo? Was it was it the king? Was it Paluto? But the perceptive and apt amongst the hooded lanterns can see by the slightness of the form and immediately begin making their guesses as to what might have happened. And so rumors are flying around, but lips are quite tight as you arrive back at Camp Dawn. Um, there is an admittedly somber mood. Um, and a as you do arrive back, Elias and, and Ophelia Reed say, well, this contest is over. The duel is done. There will be no more considerations, no more observations, no more other things collected. Me and Lieutenant Commander Drexel will give our testimony. But now that the contest has ended, I can help you with your wounds and sickness oh, and ailments. Please. <laughs> Fall to my oh knees. my god. <laughs> <laughs> Begging her, like clawing at her hand. We all oh, just like collapse, you. like ah. Mm. <laughs> We're just like putting our. Ah. Mm. Um, Ophelia Reed. Uh, uh, um, the difference. All of you have had the apothecary of the hooded lanterns now help you purge contamination, but Ophelia Reed's method of purging the contamination from your body is different. For even though she is casting the spell. Her, her act of, of casting Purge Contamination is using divine magic. And so for her, she prepares a mixture of holy water. And her act of purging contamination is much like a baptism, where she anoints your body with holy water. And then there is the laying on hands, and you feel there is this moment where she places her hands upon you. On, um, basically on your cheeks and anoints your head with the holy water and as she casts the spell you feel your entire body heat up like a fever and she and the sweat just pours out of you into a silver bowl that she lays over your forehead and another uh, acolyte helps to um, dab up any of the sweat. And the sweat that you excrete is pure bile. And as the flame keepers and her ac as the flame keeper and her acolytes collect the sweat, you feel the heat like the sacred flame is burning in your body, burning away the corruption and the contamination. And the, the flame keepers collect the sweat into the, the silver bowl. And the moment the, the, the contaminated fluid hits the bowl, it sizzles and evaporates. And the experience of having the contamination purged from your body is n not unlike as if you had been, like, you were sweating intensely. But rather than leaving you. Um, physically exhausted in the way that the apothecary's treatment does, this is almost like it leaves you spiritually exhausted. And so you will all have uh, some levels of exhaustion commensurate with that, but you'll have the time to recuperate. 
That was much kinder than Jerry the apothecary. <laughs> who just who just starts winging it. So and many years. Yeah, Jerry, man. Well, Jerry yeah. used leeches. Jerry, and run then, away! And, and he and he forgets some leeches. He goes, "Oh, yeah, no, oh, she, there's a, I, there's, I'm not counting all of them. Yeah. There's still three missing." Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we're still Jerry. looking for Jerry's missing three leeches. Um, yeah, unaccounted for on one of our bodies or all of our bodies. We don't know. Yeah. Somewhere underneath all the fur. <laughs> Quite fine. Though. Yeah, Veo has a knack for uh, Jerry. Constantly loses leeches on Veo. Yeah, you can You can never get all of them back. You because the you'll leeches be, you'll are be black. In. Her hair is black. <laughs> you'll be in. Jerry, just draw a diagram so we can find these leeches. Three days later, you'll find a leech or two, just like behind your ear, under your arm. Whoop. I believe that we established the apothecary was a woman, so it's it will we'll, we'll spell it Jerry with an I. I don't I don't know if I ever. Uh, whatever. -R -R. Yeah, G E R. Yeah, Jerry the apothecary. Great. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> oh, Jerry. Come on. So, are we? Is you this a long you rest then? You will be able to take a long rest from here. Um. I ask Ophelia, well, I ask Ophelia if we can start preparing uh, funeral rites. We can indeed. If you'd like. <laughs> of course. We can do these things in phases. There, we can. Uh, if you'd like, we could. I mean, normally we would. For a monarch, we would have done it at the Cathedral of St. Petruvio. But um, I think in this case, we could head over to uh, to Flamekeeper Hannah's at the Chapel of St. Ardenna and conduct it there. Thus, she can be cremated in the vision of the saints in St. Tarna. Is there any uh, chance that any members of House Jones would want to attend not on this kind of short notice but uh, we'll uh, we'll just have to see we if we want to give word out I could try to arrange for it but we would probably have to wait a couple weeks for them to arrive if we wanted to give them the chance a long time to wait mm-hmm Perhaps, um, in honor of her being a Jones, perhaps the necklace could go to a member of her house. Yes, I think that that would be appropriate. Um, I, I don't know. It's a Von Kessel heirloom, so that's not for me to decide. Right. Uh, does the necklace give off any magical properties, or is it just a fancy, beautiful necklace? The necklace is magical in the sense that it is enchanted f for its... It was probably made through magic and is magically durable, but has no magical properties, per se. Um. That was an out of character question, but um, Wilhelm kind of holds the necklace in his hand and he's like, I see no reason to hold on to this as a special Von Kessel heirloom. Uh, I'm not going to wear it. And as far as I know, there's currently no queen or princess. So seeing as she was a Jones, Yes, I think perhaps because the funeral would be happening shortly and the Jones family would not be able to attend, we will send them the necklace in good faith as an act of kindness for, for their part in everything that the Von Kessel family was. With respect, um, 
my leash. The last yeah. says, um, I, um, I don't know who I would trust to take this necklace. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the most valuable pieces of jewelry in the continent. And, um, I must confess my concern with entrusting it to a mere courier, given its immense value. Um, uh, it, especially knowing the, shall we say, reputation it has, it might be worthwhile to keep it well it's worth a lot of money my liege and and sending it it was a gift bought by your uncle for Lenore and sending it back to her family um well that would be basically buying them a small castle we just keep it. I uh, tell you I'll what, right Elias. Keep it, right I'll I'll find the right time. You're right. Sending it on a courier might be dangerous. It's probably the most likely item to be stolen. Then the courier would get a castle. I mean, I, I mean, I'll hold on to it for now. Um, <sighs> but I have no need of. Uh, the most expensive necklace in the world or the least most expensive ne- I'm not mm. I mean I do have this necklace I have the uh, what do if, I have if you wish to I would simply say that a gift like this should not be given without consideration that is all my I would advise my leash it is a very valuable heirloom and I would consider carefully who you s- offer it to, for it is not a trinket. It may not have magical power, but it is valuable, and it is a symbol of Lenore. So I would consider that carefully. I will... Also, you might have a future queen who you could give to. Uh, no, I, I don't... Veo is a little more forward than myself, but that is something that you should be considering, my liege. A marriage of... A well-considered marriage would be perhaps the single most important decision you might make in your early years as king. It will solidify... It is a tool that you should not... Well, it is a gesture, shall I say, that you should consider carefully. A marriage can solidify more than just the bonds of love and matrimony. A a marriage means the future for House Von Kessel, but it also means an ally that we can count on. Use it to woo a fancy lady, Will. I have tried wooing fancy ladies in the past, and it has gone poorly. Did you have uh, a necklace like this? Yeah, no. Did you have a castle necklace? I brought my cousin along with me, and it didn't go well. Um, Mistake number one. Okay, perhaps I hang on to the necklace to uh, woo said future... I don't. I don't know. I'm not much. With respect, my liege, you're putting things out of order. There's no need for you, as the king of Westmar, to woo your wife before you marry her. Let the love come afterwards. That's that should be the last thing you're worried about. It it is the last thing I'm worried about, and uh, frankly, I was trying to avoid this whole conversation, but here we are, and I would be lying if I said I was. I, I, I would be lying if I didn't say I, I to, double negative. This is tricky. I'm uncomfortable. <clears throat> I apologize, anyway. my liege. It's just 
given the situation, you may not have the conve- the unfortunately one of the burdens of being a monarch is often that you do not get one of the privileges of many common folk, that of marrying for love. I am sorry, but that is a fact. Well, again, I can we just we'll fi- we'll figure this out later. Um, I I'm working on political gain right now. There's a lot on my plate. I don't need to worry about my love life. It is your marriage. It is a political decision and one that doesn't need to be made right this moment (laughs) nor discussed until i am crowned and then we can figure it i i'm not in a rush to get why why is everybody looking at me i i just um Pluto, we need to keep an eye out for. I'm just saying future potential mrs yeah we have to vet them i'm i'm just saying A very simple solution. You could, your, may not be the best opportunity, but perhaps we could make some overtures to Venus Joplin. Pluto, how's how's your sister these days? Is she okay? How is she well? She mourns. Right, that was a, a, right. um, Whose son wishes to take the throne wait is that what you're are you are you uh i just wanted to know how she was uh forget it in the just in the context of the conversation it just Just, felt like you were pluto does she like fancy necklaces would that make her forget look no we're not asking her to forget give me the necklace no this is no i'm not giving you the necklace Hmm. I'm holding on to this, okay? This is this whole conversation. I'm holding on to the necklace. Maybe I mean it's not the Pluto, thank either. you like very if, much. If I'm sorry I said George's, anything. Uh if you were George's like you know, dad. Stepfather? Like stepfather. That would be like a great way for you to solidify. No, no, okay. Li- no, only I'm That's not I, a bad she, idea. It's it is I a bad approve. idea. No. That's sender. <laughs> this is no, no, no. Do not send her. Do not. Mm. Look, Wilhelm, I. Elias is right. Eventually, you're going to have to make some Why nice things. The, I bet you ch- the first. Mm. I bet you. I think Actually, the first, I wondered. I wondered if we might make a more advantageous match, Wilhelm. Why are we still talking about <laughs> well, this? Well. Advanta- who would be more advantageous? The Divine Matriarch's sister. What? I don't even know who that is. Or perhaps one of the daughters of Venus Joplin. I'm just saying that maybe a marriage of that sta- station. Pluto, no offense, a, no offense to you, Pluto Jackson, but the Jacksons are not necessarily at the top of the Caspian hierarchy. Yet. Right you haven't even seen, like, this year is going to be our year. I just know it. I Pluto, know. that would be a really intense political connection, wouldn't it? Guys, um, we not now, Wilhelm. We're discussing your future. <laughs> yeah, stop interrupting. <laughs> go go ahead, then, Master <laughs> Pluto. Look, I think if you if you want to, I want to see you try out your first levels of diplomacy with uh, the lords of Westamar. I think if if we've all learned anything, that's. That's where the first schmoozing needs to happen. Yeah, and we have once much you more sort of pressing. master that, but then we can work on your the on, on the top. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is an opportunity. As much as it would be an advantage for us to solidify, certainly both Ludwig von Fritz and Ludwig von Fritz has children. Perhaps you could make overtures there. Valentin von Bay. For for all for, for all I can, I mean, there, Elias. There, if I hear one more word about my future marriage, I'm going to demote you from lieutenant commander to something far lower. <laughs> I mean, well. no, I need him. Okay, I'm actually not going to do that. But I just want this topic dropped 
for now, uh, we can revisit it when, uh, maybe never, maybe in 10 years, uh, we'll see. I, I hear you loud and clear, Elias, Veo, Pluto. Thank you for all of your insight. Um, I look forward to continuing this conversation uh, later. Um, uh, Wilhelm just turns and like walks off. He just he leaves the situation. He's walk away. <laughs> all right. I suppose it was not a good time to bring that up after all, considering all that's happened, but <sighs> Elias turns to the two of you. I don't want him getting any romantic notions. I mean, he could still get romantic and it'd be a political thing. And didn't he? Wasn't he in love with someone? I don't know. He mentioned something about liking someone. Yeah, I just don't know if we have that luxury anymore. You understand? Yeah, but it's not a 0% chance. Maybe a low percent chance, but not a zero. Come on, Elias. I know you have a little romantic in there somewhere. He looks at you <laughs> <laughs> blankly. Oh, I just pat him on the so. face a few times. I'm like, ah, we'll find it. See yeah. on the no, that rough exterior somewhere. And I walk away too. Just kind of with the bounce of my step. Okay. Well, as the night fades, is there anything you'd like to do before you settle down? Uh, Wilhelm stays up upset and mumbling to himself about engagements and love and uh, yeah I don't know I almost feel like um, we don't need to do this full scene but I, I, I wonder I feel like in this moment Wilhelm goes by Pluto's tent and asks him to go for an evening stroll and just reminisce with him. Not necessarily about his sister per se, but just about the old times when the their two families were a little closer. And uh, the times that they did spend together with both Pluto, um, Leonard, myself, Eris, and others who... Uh, you know, used to used to hang out together in, in yeah, castles yeah, and have like we, family. As we recover from our horrible oh. a, a contamination, it's nice to reminisce about the simpler times and think about like the new adventures that we're forging. You know, yeah. I, I I I knew you then, and now I know you now, and um, I know you're you're getting asked a lot of, so know that. We're here to help, and I think you're doing great. And I think uh, you're 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 taking it in stride. So keep it up, because I think you're going to make a great king. Uh, Pluto, I uh, I know we didn't keep in touch much after um, after the the civil war and all of that, but uh, for what it's worth, it, it's really good to have uh, a friend, somebody I, I know and trusted uh, next to me for all of this. So just thank you for, for being here. It's it's meant a lot to me. Um, obviously, I, I'm making friends with everybody I've met. I've known Rudy for years now, and Wrath I, I've known for a while, but really... <laughs> I mean, out of out of uh, Veo's kind of new to me. She seems pretty cool though, and she has her heart in the right She's place. She's like just behind us. Oh, oh, hi, hi, Veo. I, I didn't come on this walk. <laughs> um, but, I assumed you were tracking. No. Pluto, you. I, I always think you're nearby. Pluto, you're technically my oldest friend here, so just thank you for for being being here, and thank you for those kind words. Mm. Yeah, just don't die, okay? What? Don't die. Oh, uh, okay. And with that, <laughs> it's back to a 
Veo just face in her stew sleeping for the first time in her life. She didn't finish her meal because she was so tired. Spiritually exhausted. (laughs) Well, the two of you have, the three of you have a couple days of exhaustion to sleep off and relax through. So, is there anything else you'd like to do with these days or just spend them recuperating? Um, I think downtime. I clean my new armor. I uh, I give Casper a bath. Um, okay. What about what about some? Uh, what if we wrote some letters to some of the um, the lords? Send some uh, send some uh, envoys. Or I have been thinking about this and i do think that before we we start any of that i do want to have like some meetings with some of uh our people um uh veo your your other father eric uh i would like to talk with him elias perhaps a few other people um and make arrangements i i I have been thinking about this and i i think it would start us off on the wrong foot if I called everybody to come to me. I do think that perhaps Wilhelm, I, <laughs> will need to do a publicity tour and travel to the kingdoms, see them in their homes, and explain to them my goals perhaps bring gifts and just as your presence upon them and show them who's boss i like it i was thinking more the the dusk warden's job when we were set out was to tour around westmar solving the issues arising in small towns and communities it's I've always in my heart wanted to just help people and do what is right. And so perhaps making arrangements with each of the dukes or leaders of, of the communities to aid them, what, what they need, what they want, um, and help them in any way I can would perhaps be a good first move in solidifying some alliances. Hmm. I think that this is a solid plan. We need a concerted effort, and we need to unify the kingdom around you as our monarch, Wilhelm. Having the solid support of the nobles and getting the Illyrians at least off of our backs will allow Westamar to confront this problem as a united, in a united way. Something we've never been able to do. We've been fighting each other constantly here in Westamar. We had the civil war. Then we've been fractured and broken and unable to meet a concerted effort to repel the Illyrians until now. But if you can rally the rest of the nobility, then we would have resources. We would have things that we would have never had. Not even when, when your uncle and your aunt, when your father and your aunt attempted to retake Drakenheim. We would have a solid push. I think this is a fine plan. Thank you, Elias. Uh, I don't think I've heard anybody say one of my plans has been fine in a few weeks now, so uh, that's a relief. Um, Hopefully others agree. I I trust your counsel, Elias, but I would also like other heads on this matter because it is proven that um, it takes an army to make decisions uh, and it shouldn't be left just to me there is a reason why the seals of drakenheim exist and why a small council exists choosing who those people are going to be is going to be of the utmost importance using those seals to collect a group of intelligent individuals who can make decisions for westmar 
I think that's something that we need to look at as well. We hold all the cards now. We have the crown of Westamar, and we have almost all of the seals. I have received some word that our allies, Sebastian, Wrath, and Rudy, have been successful in their mission, and they have retrieved the scepter of St. Vitruvio. <sighs> Excellent. I thought they were just getting information. They were just scouting, but if they were able to pull it off without any issue, then amazing. This brings one issue to the fore. What to be done about Lucretia Matthias. Originally, the trade was going to be this for the Flamekeeper's phylactery, which we need. It is the last piece of the puzzle. If we hand over... If we... Give her the full, the the shield and the what's the other um, the scepter of Saint Retrievia. Then we would receive the phylactery, and we could then 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 we can move on towards crowning you king. Well, yes, we can make all the arrangements necessary from there. Well then, that that is something that we will have to address quickly. We would have a choice to make. There are three things that you have to decide what you're going to want to do these in order, Wilhelm. Do we resolve the matter with the Illyrians, this duel, or do we ask them to wait? Because our other options here are we could resolve the matter with Lucretia Matthias and return to Castle Draken with a small council assembled and crown you properly, immediately. Then you could go on tour wearing the crown of Westamar and bearing its full power. It's possible some of the nobility might see that and respect it but others may see that as you being hasty having not won their favor it's a gamble but it's a choice that you could make what do you think again um i mean i have thoughts on this but i would like to talk to my closest allies i i think my heart tells me that I should make amends with the people of Westamar before putting the crown on my head. I want them to want me to be king. I don't... This isn't a crown that I wear lightly. The crown weighs heavy on me. And it is not a choice that I am eager to take. It is a choice that I feel like I can maybe do good things with <sighs> and hopefully unite our people I would rather have their support in doing so Vea what do you think Wilhelm should do you're not going to get support of all the people if someone says no are you not going to take the crown if somebody says no I will do my best to prove to them the value of me as king. I think, yeah, regardless, right. you need to take that crown. Yes, the favor of the people is important, but so is showing them that they have someone that they can look to to rule this place. When we haven't had a ruler, when we haven't had a leader. And do you think they're gonna accept you even more without it? I think you should take the crown. I think you need to stand as a strong figure, a leader that they can follow, that they can have faith in, that can make decisions. Hmm. Pluto, what do you think? Bear's right. Um, you you have this this country's divided, and you have lords that will show you 
respect and others that won't bow until you are king and even those that won't fall in line um you know they they will just stall the inevitable uh some of them may not even fall, like come around until you take it like this is we're we're on the brink of something and i think the now is the time to act mm. and there can't be hesitation so do veo what do you think we should do about lucretia matthias well at this point i don't trust what she's gonna do with the scepter and mm. shield and to be honest if we're planning on handing her over to the Silver Order, what's the point of making a deal with her? Hmm. I mean, she has helped us, and it's been appreciated, but she's also not helping this world hmm. doing what she's doing. The lines have been drawn, and I did make a choice that seems to have already gotten back to her and her people are upset with me and I'm sure she is too um, whether or not she would even hand over the phylactery is in question I do believe her to be honest she's scary and I don't agree with her ideals she is honest, so there is also a chance that she stays true to her word. But regardless, <sighs> she has reasons for wanting the scepter and the shield that I can't put my finger on. But Veo, I do agree with you that she's up to something. We saw her people marching on the cathedral. Hmm. And just because she's honest doesn't mean she's told you all the truths that she has. I agree. So, Pluto, what do you think we should do about her? Look, I've been so torn with Lucretia Matthias. Um, Ignatius sees her as one with the light, as it does all those who follow the flame. And... The, the truth of it is is that she she has her her path it doesn't line up with what we need for this city hmm. the the idea of after what Sebastian saw what what we saw what he showed me the the if we truly want to save this place, it can't be. The miracles are going to have to come through us, not through her. Hmm. Very well, then. How should we handle this situation? Should we simply apprehend her, hand her over to the Silver Order? What do you think, Vale? think it's gonna be the only way oh i don't we don't need them marching in to just take her i think we should hand her over all right what would they do with her we could ask ophelia reed that but my understanding of it is is that they would bring her before the divine matriarch to face trial I believe that this is what they want to do so that they, she can be called to account before the flame and proved to be a heretic, proved to be deceived. By doing this, I think that they're trying to avoid a further making a martyr out of her. There is also the question of the Silver Order and the duel. Um, I know that... Veo, Pluto, I know that you're you're eager to get the crown on my head and make a symbol of that, but I also think it's in our best interest to be people of our word. Hmm. 
and the duel is finished, I will have you all know that I don't plan to accept the Illyrian offer. They have agreed to peace. And if we win this duel, Sebastian Crow's life is saved, and I will use the leverage that we have from hopefully winning this duel to tell them that I do not want their money. I do not want to be in debt to Illyria. All that I ask them is their companionship and friendship in the events that are to come. And I think they will accept that because our goals align in some ways. Enough that it would be in their best interests to not go to war with us, but instead unite behind a king who wants the same thing they want. Fair enough. So we have to we have some decisions to make. Do we what do we do first? Do we go bring in Lucretia Matthias? Do we go finish our negotiations with the Illyrians? Or do we go tour and visit the nobles? I think we need to get the band back together and bring the other three in to figure out very well. Be best to do different pieces of this. I also think um, another piece of this puzzle, Elias, is um, our relationship with the Amethyst Academy. I would very much like to speak to Eldrick, River, Sebastian, and Wrath. Hmm. And perhaps figure out what our movement forward is because we can't lift one ally up hmm. and allow another to crumble but there is no way that we can ally with the silver order without agreeing to, to the destruction of delirium what I was hoping is that the academy would see that they used, they were something before Delirium and they can be just something without it. But it feels like that's going to be a much harder sell than I was anticipating. <sighs> what might help us in that sell, though, is if I could talk to those that are closest to us. We need to and deal just, with one problem at a time, though, my, my king. I think that the Academy is a bit of a problem. I agree. But... I do think that rather than leaving jobs half done, it might be in our best interest to finish some things that we've started. I agree, but are we going to lose Sebastian and Wrath as allies if they... Uh, River didn't seem too keen to work with us any longer. Uh, losing the support of some of our allies, it, it is important that we hash this out before we go because yeah. we're going to want Sebastian and Wrath on our side. Indeed. Vea, what do you think? I think that we're not going against the Academy fully. Again, all we're asking for is their consideration as to what their true meaning is. And, well, whether the Directorate agrees with that or not, it doesn't mean we can't convince our own allies to see things in our perspective, especially since Sebastian knows what delirium is all about. Indeed. Well then, what would you like to do next? Polito? what do you think? I like the idea of getting the band back together. I think, uh, Letting Sebastian know the state of affairs. Mm -hmm. And River's right, we we may have overstepped. So letting him know that we didn't mean to bargain with his life. It was, we didn't, you know, when we really sat down, I thought that there was no option. That they were coming after him and that his head was on the table. I didn't know that we couldn't just like not do that. And I feel bad now that that was mm. even a... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I may, I think 
First and foremost, we do have a funeral to attend to. After the funeral is done, I personally think that we should wrap up. We should get the band back together, discuss matters. I want to hear what everybody has to say, but my thoughts right now are that we wrap up the Illyrian duel since we have all the pieces and mm. Venus Joplin is on her way anyway. Might as well not keep everybody waiting. If I were to go with what Veo and Pluto say, then I guess the course of action after that is to bring in Lucretia Matthias and retrieve the phylactery and crown me king, um, which I'd also like to hear opinions from others on. And then we do a tour of Westmar in goodwill and good faith in hopes of uniting Westmar as much as we can under the Von Kessel banner. I have some requests that I plan for Wrath, Sebastian, and Rudy as well. I know that um, mm. Rudy has some very strong allies. Uh, she used to be part of a very prestigious and, and renowned military company that fought for my father. And we have the Steel Fangs as well, and with more military support, if we can get as much of those people back together, as many names, as many mm. groups, organizations under us as we can, then as much as I, I don't know how to put this in a nice way, um, but those who do not wish to join us, I will not start a civil war. But if people see the potential power that the Von Kessel name has, they may be more willing to agree. And really, when I'm saying this, I'm referring to Toddsfeld, which, I'm not going to lie, is going to be the last place we go on our tour. Very well. In that case, I believe this would be prudent. My reports indicate that Rudy, Sebastian, and Wrath are in Liberio, which is where we are to meet the Illyrians and Venus Joplin to settle this little duel. I will arrange to draft letters to the nobles, announcing that you will be by to visit once these negotiations are complete to end this war. We negotiate with the Illyrians, end the war, then go on your little tour. We'll deal with Lucretia Matthias as we need to. And we will be able to confer with the with your other friends once we are all united again in Liberio. So perhaps we should make plans to start traveling now. What do you can think? We, can we hold the funeral first? Or should we wait for that? What do you think, Elias? Hmm. I imagine that perhaps there might be some reason to do it sooner than later, but matters can always be, we can certainly have, if we would like to have a more private ceremony now to just see to our remains and then a more public ceremony later. We could do that as well. Veo Pluto, um... It might be nice to... say goodbye while she's... while we're here. Mm. It's sort of fresh. I feel that too. I feel like I don't want to be selfish and take anything away from anybody else, which is my worry. So please tell me if there's a better direction for this. But my family, the Von Kessels, have been through a lot. And to be 
Quite honest, I have not had the opportunity to lay any of them to rest. (gasps) This funeral is symbolic for me in many ways, seeing as it is the only family member I will be laying to rest. It sort of symbolizes all the Von Castles that I've lost. I never got to say... uh, I never got to say bye to my father, my mother, my sisters. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, My aunts and uncles, my cousins. Hmm. Then we will see to it. We'll have to do that next time, though, because I think that's where we should end for the night. Yeah. Getting the band back together. Alrighty. Well, (laughs) on that note... There is where we will be taking a break for a couple weeks uh, so that we can have a bit of a break. Um, when we come back, we might mix it up with the characters. We might flip things back, see things where it would go. we got to have this this memorial for Lenore and uh, negotiations with the Illyrians and lots of things to come in the future. So we will be taking the next couple weeks off uh for so a much needed break following the our Kickstarter campaign, Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim, which if you did miss out on, you can get late pledges still. But a big thank you to our amazing cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, uh, for also saving Veo. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we did it. Alive. Yeah. We're all alive. Dude, all I wasn't even I wasn't even worried 30 times. I was starting to not be worried and then the moment that monty was like and you can't regain hit points i got really worried all over again i spent a week unworrying and then i instantly got worried and then then dropping her in i was like oh now she can't see oh no she just gained like all of her health back though that's great it's great great. yeah (laughs) that was a that was a battle for the ages Uh, Uh, and a huge thank you to Kyle for all of the work he does behind the scenes managing the stream. And a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty Martin, uh, Dr. Monty Martin, for uh, running a great combat encounter, uh, an extremely deadly combat encounter, and uh, setting up the next many arcs that are to come in The Fate of Drakenheim. Thank you. Yeah, we got a long road ahead, um, but uh, lots of exciting things still to come. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community that supports our work. If you enjoy the work that we do here on Twitch or YouTube or on podcast platforms, please consider becoming a supporter of our channel by following the links in the description below to get on our Patreon. Uh, We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you are joining us on Patreon, make sure to hop onto our Discord and chat with us about all things Drakenheim, all things D&D, about our books that are coming out or the ones that have come out. Just chat with us about anything you want. We're on there. We do monthly writer's rooms. We do monthly Q&As. And we're in there all the time just chatting and answering questions. Um, in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. Uh, they've graciously given us permission to use them in our live stream games, and you can use them in your games too. Uh, we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. For example, the Roll20 for our virtual tabletop. Um, we had some amazing uh, maps uh, created uh, by Monty. Um, and the other team for the original Dungeons of Drakenheim uh, Kickstarter. Uh, so those are... Uh, and then some of the tokens uh, are from the uh, official 5e source books, but also uh, made using the artwork from Dungeons of Drakenheim. So uh, I hope you've gone out and you had a chance to support yeah. the second Kickstarter. And if you're uh, and, and and able to use some of these in your own games. Yeah, very soon we will have a Dungeons of Drakenheim VTT set Woo! for Roll20 and Foundry. So that'll stay tuned for that because that'll be coming down the pipeline along with uh, probably an official token set too for that. I'm not sure if that'll be inc- how we'll, we'll if, if the tokens will be available separately from the BTT, but I think we'll see what we can make possible. So um, yeah, so that uh, we got all, all that going on. Jill, anything else we got to talk about? 
yeah, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes uh, t-shirts. Uh, check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Indeed, indeed. Um, and of course, you can always check us out uh, at YouTube at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes for all of our weekly uploads, even though I'm taking some time off. Kelly and I have got a head on videos, so those videos will still be dropping every Thursday on YouTube. Yeah. And be sure to join us live on Tuesday evenings, but we're going to be taking three weeks off. But when we come back, we're going to be playing from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And of course, you can always catch up with the show on YouTube or as an audio only podcast as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in a couple weeks to find out the fate of Drakenheim.